We'll put two minutes on the clock, knowing that you'll probably have a bit more than that in the actual exam. Uh, but this is, again, just to give us a bit of practice and keep us on our toes. So Gary is 47 years, attends the rural general practice, complaining of three days of left-sided abdominal pain. Again, it's a sudden sharp pain in the back, but seems to have moved around to the flank. He experiences sharp episodic pain that has lasted for hours before suddenly settling, but later returning. He's uncertain what the cause is, has a past medical history of hypertension, managed with perindopril 2.5 milligrams, and has no known allergies. There's a BMI of 26. He does not smoke, drinks two cans of mixed drink beer each night. What further history would confirm your suspected diagnosis? Write four history questions in note form. So I thought I'd give a little example here of, of my approach to uh, actually structuring my responses in the actual exam. So you can highlight uh, on the page and underline certain details. I try and underline uh, the actual clinical notes from the case and then circle the, the things that I'm potentially going to be using for the management side of things. Uh, in particular, if I note something that they've made a particular point of, such as that he drinks two cans of mixed strength beer each night, I put a little star or, or something extra to remind me to go back to that because there's a chance that might become a particularly important piece of information. Happy with that? Let's see what some of the suggested answers are. So this is a... Oh, actually, sorry, we should go back quickly. Um... What we're asking for here is further history, so we want to make sure that we're not going to be repeating any of the same things that we've already got of suspected diagnosis. Uh, this is one thing I actually like about the KFP exam is that they presume that you've already kind of clicked here with this kind of case, what, what the actual situation is. They're not going to be asking you about uh, necessarily what the diagnosis is so much as the questions that kind of lead to, to that kind of diagnosis. Uh, and so it's kind of taking that step forward, but then pulling you back and saying, well, how did you get there? Uh, right, four. So we want to specify that we are only answering four things. History questions in note form. You ready for the answers? So is there any hematuria? So this is a case of uh, renal colic. Hematuria is a uh, not uncommon finding with renal colic there and certainly leads you down that pathway. Uh, are there any other lower urinary tract symptoms such as frequency, dysuria or urgency, all very common with renal colic? Uh, does this uh, exacerbate or does anything exacerbate or alleviate the pain? So uh, classically, renal colic is one of those things that no matter how you try and position yourself, it's, it's going to be not a fun time for you. Uh, and so again, these are also good questions that if those things aren't there, it would also help try and clarify well, what are the differential diagnoses and does it lead to any of those but they are quite specific to uh, renal colic being the answer and again confirming the suspected diagnosis uh, tied into that as well you could have things like are there any changes with eating and drinking which helps exclude potentially other GI causes is there a diet high in salt uh, which is associated with renal colic any fevers sweats or chills can be used uh, to help clarify, could there potentially be a septic picture or, or infected stone, which certainly can happen. I've, I've had one a couple of weeks back, which uh, unfortunately she was pretty sick. Fortunately, she's now much better. 
Uh, has there recently been any dehydration or ad- inadequate uh, oral hydration? Uh, which again, dehydration, something that can promote stone formation, change in bowel habits again, querying uh, other GI causes, any family history of similar presentations or renal colic, again, you're kind of specifying down, and we do know there can be a genetic component to uh, families that are more likely to produce stones. And of course, is there any personal medical history of renal colic? Uh, That is one question that they have uh, not, significantly mentioned um, no other past medical history however they have specified he has a past medical history of hypertension and so that would be one that I'd probably leave as a a last response uh, given again we're trying to avoid uh, potentially adding things to the history when they've kind of already suggested that there isn't anything else there everyone happy with that excellent Uh, throw comments down below and uh, I'll try and get to them as well as time goes on Ready for another question? We'll put two minutes on the clock. Here we go. You examine Gary after completing the history. What elements of examination that can be performed in the clinic would be important to perform? List two specific examinations. How do we all feel about that? Let's get to the answers. Uh, again, uh, highlighting that this is examination, in particular, things that we could do in the clinic, listing two specific examples. So pre-filling that, putting down one, two, making sure I'm filling all the uh, questions that are being asked. Answers. Uh, so your analysis to assess for hemoglobin is a, a bit of a controversy, whereas would this be examination or investigation? I've seen this uh in practice questions and been an accepted answer. Uh, So I would put that down. Uh, Of course, your other clinical signs for um, uh, renal colic would be palpate for costal vertebral angle and left flank tenderness, given we specified this is a left abdominal pain. Uh, Likewise, you also investigate for vital signs, for signs of fever, uh, tachycardia or hypotension as well. You guys ready for the next one? Two minutes on the clock. And time starts now. You send Gary for further investigations. He returns three days later after you've been off yesterday on a non-rostered day. You see his results had returned with significantly abnormal results, but had been marked as normal no action by another doctor checking your results. Gary's quite upset and worried that his results may have been missed without his representation. What steps could be taken to prevent this from recurring? Right, six specific management steps. Sorry, lost the clock.
So again, just highlighting some of the salient features, things that I don't want to be missing, pre-filling those answer prompts. Let's go through. So this kind of question and this kind of turnaround as well, where it's kind of linear down one path, then switching it up to cover another domain uh, is not uncommon uh, in KFP questions. Uh, and so in particular, this is looking at clinic processes, which is one of the uh, kind of domains of uh, the college. And so it's something that they want you to be thinking about as well. Thankfully, they've actually got some guidelines out, uh, which tie into practice accreditation as well. And these are th some things that you need to be uh, familiar with. And uh, some of the things there uh, would be to actually address the issue directly. And that would be through discussing with the fellow practitioner, the other GP that checked these results. Discuss the situation with the practice manager as well to, to highlight that there is a potential systems issue there that needs to be addressed at a higher level. And again, another acceptable response there would be to raise it at a, a practice meeting or clinical meeting to discuss with the peers of the clinic. Uh, but then step through, well, what is the process itself? And so the first thing there is to make sure that all results are reviewed appropriately to ensure that all results are appropriately annotated with the doctor's name for tra tracing back uh, who's been marking things down. Ensure all results are incorporated into the patient record. Ensure the practice has a recall system to notify patients of significant results. Ensure all patients are aware of the clinic's process for following up on the results. And this is something that should come up in day-to-day -day conversation with the patients as well of if something happens, what are we going to do about it? How am I going to notify them? Uh, likewise then, uh, ensuring the patients, uh, sorry, ensure the practice initiates and manages patient reminders. So there should be something there to actually uh, let the, the clinic contact patients in a way to let them know the results are either there or need actioning. And of course, a process to identify and manage abnormal and life-threatening results identified outside of normal opening hours. Uh, so this isn't necessarily that if a result comes in at 2am, someone's able to action it. Uh, in reality, if a result is that abnormal, then uh, the lab itself should be contacting the doctors involved. Uh, more likely, it's going to be something that's that's less severe, but might be faxed through to the clinic at 2am. Uh, is there a process in the clinic for someone when they first get in to be checking those things and uh, highlighting the results to an appropriate physician or, or doctor to be actioning further? Uh, so again, this is something that is probably worth remembering. This is something that does come up as uh, actual questions. 